everyone, it's Red Saber here from Saber C++, and today we're going to be learning about how to make more complex light patterns with these RGB LED strips. If you don't know how to set these up, go ahead and watch my first video on how to set them up and create a simple program from the link in the description. And if you need any of these supplies, I've put links to all of them in the description as well. Let's get started. As you can see, I've opened up the sketch we created in the last video, which sets all of the LEDs in the strip to red, then switches to purple, and then to blue-green, and keeps doing that for as long as the program is on. I'll start by deleting everything in the loop function, but I'll leave everything in the setup function and above that, so we still have our LED strip set up, but we can adjust what we're actually doing with it. First, let's take a look at one of the functions built into the FastLED library called FillRainbow. This basically just goes through the LEDs on the strip and changes their color so each one has a different color, like a rainbow. To use it, we can type fill rainbow and add our array of LEDs. Then the number of LEDs we want to fill. In this case, I'll just do all of the LEDs. And then the LED to start, which will be zero. Then we just need to call fastled.show so that the LEDs light up with these colors. Let's try it out. All right, let's clear out this code and start again. As you can see, we have here the sketch we created in the last video, which switches the LEDs from red to purple to bluish green. I'll just go ahead and delete everything in the loop function so we can start a new program. But I'll leave everything in the setup function and above so that we still have our LEDs prepared, we just aren't doing anything with them yet. First, let's take a look at one of the functions built into the Fast LED library, which is called Fill Rainbow. First, we'll add the array of LEDs, then the number of LEDs that we want to light up with our rainbow, which in this case will be all of them, and then the LED to start on, which in this case will be zero. That's the first LED. This function will start with the first LED, and it'll make it red. Then it'll move through each LED after that and make it a slightly different color to give the LED strip a rainbow effect. Now, we just need to type fastled.show to light up all of the LEDs on the strip. Let's try it out. And now we have a nice rainbow, starting at red and going through all of the other colors until it gets to the end of the strip. Let's try something a little bit more dynamic, where the LEDs actually change color over time. All right, let's clear out this code and start a new program here in the loop function. The first thing I'm going to do is create an array of integers, which I'll call RGB color, and I'll make it three long, one for red, one for green, and one for blue. I'll start out by initializing these colors, setting the red value, which is the zeroth value, to 255, so it's fully on, and setting the other two values, green and blue, to zero. So this will just give us a nice red color. The reason that we're doing this as an array, and not as a CRGB object, like we have up here, is because we'll need to increase and decrease these components separately, and the CRGB object doesn't support that. So what we're trying to do here is have our whole LED strip fade through all of the different colors possible. So it start out as red, and then it'll fade through orange and yellow into green, and then it'll fade through a greenish blue into blue, and then it'll fade through purple and back into red. All of that will happen in one loop function. And then we'll go to the next loop function where it'll start out as red, because that's how we have it set up, and it'll just do that whole thing again. So we'll just see it looping through the colors over and over again. Now, in order to actually create this effect, what we need to do is slowly decrease one of the colors, in this case red, as we increase another color. In this case, for the first loop, it'll be green. So we'll start out by decreasing the red from 255 down to zero, and at the same time increasing the green from zero up to 255. This will give us a nice shift from red through to orange, yellow, and then green. Then we'll do the same thing going from green to blue, and then finally from blue to red. Let's start by coding it, and it'll make more sense once we're finished. 
So I'll create a for loop with an integer called uh, deck color. Now this is short for the decreasing color. So we'll start it out as zero and we'll increase it up until it's uh, two. So basically it'll be zero, which is red, and then it'll be green, and then it'll be blue. So each of the colors will have its turn where it's decreasing and a different color is increasing. Now inside of the loop, we also need to figure out which color should be increasing. So we'll create an integer called increasing color and we'll set it to the decreasing color plus one. So when the decreasing color is red, then this will be red plus one, which in this case is green, that will be increasing. And then when we bump up the decreasing color to green, the increasing color will be blue. So each time we'll have the decreasing color and then the increasing color will be the next color. However, when the decreasing color is two, we don't want the increasing color to be three because there's no three. We actually need it to be zero. So what we'll do is we'll add in a little bit of Boolean logic. And in here, we basically have a little mini if statement. So in here, we'll say if the decorant decreasing color is equal to two. So here we have this sort of little if statement, and then we'll put a question mark and then the true condition. So if it's true that the decrease in color is equal to two, then that means that we actually want to increase the zero color, which is red. However, if it's not true that the decrease in color is equal to two, so if the decrease in color is equal to zero or one, then we'll simply set the increase in color to the decrease in color plus one. Now that we know which color should be decreasing and which color should be increasing, we actually need to decrease and increase them. So I'll create another for loop with an integer, we'll just call it i, and it'll start out as zero, and we'll continue, as long as it's less than 255, increasing it by one each time. So now we'll get our decreasing color from the RGB color, and we'll go ahead and subtract one from it. So in the first loop, this decreasing color will be zero, so we'll be decreasing the red one each time. So the red color will go from 255 all the way down to zero. And we also need to increase the increasing color, so we'll simply add one to it each time. So in the first loop, the red will be pulled all the way down to zero, and the green will be pushed all the way up to 255. And this will be happening at the same time to give us a nice fade effect. So now we have all the proper colors in our RGB color array on each loop and we just need to show them on all of the LEDs on our strip. So, yep, that means another for loop. We'll create one with an integer called LED, and we'll go from zero all the way up until the number of LEDs. Once again, increasing it by one each time. So in here, all we're doing is getting one of the LEDs from our LED array and setting it to the color that we just figured out. Remember, though, that this color needs to be a CRGB value, not an array of three values. So we'll need to get the values from our array and plug them in to create a new CRGB object. And the last thing we need to do is just tell the fast LED library to go ahead and show the color that we've created. So just one more time, a quick recap. We go through and we start with the decreasing color being zero, and then we set it to one, which is green, and then two, which is blue. And the increasing color is simply one above the decreasing color. So when we're decreasing red, we increase green. When we decrease green, we increase blue. And because of this little bit of Boolean logic here, when we decrease blue, we increase the red. Then in this for loop, we simply go from zero to 255 and we cross fade the colors. So the decreasing color goes all the way down to zero and the increasing color goes all the way up to 255. And the last little bit here, we just grab every LED in the LEDs array, which is every LED on our LED strip, and we turn them all to the color we figured out, and then we show it. Let's try it out. Nice. Now our LEDs are shifting through a rainbow of colors. If this video has been helpful to you so far, please give it a like. All right, make sure to save this program if you want to refer to it later, and we'll head on to the next step. The final thing that I'd like to take a look at is the color correction options available on the LED strips. Why do we need color correction? Well, it turns out that green LEDs are typically much brighter than the two other two LEDs, with the blue LED usually also being brighter than the red LED. 
To see this, let's just set all of our LEDs to white by creating a simple for loop with an integer called LED that goes from 0 to 255. And each time we'll just set an LED in our LED array to the CRGB value 255255255. And then we'll use fastled.show to light up all of the LEDs with this color. So again, we're just setting all of the LEDs to white, and we're going to see what it looks like. And as you can see, there's a bit of a greenish-blue tint to this white. So let's see if we can make this a little bit more of a natural white. So the Fast LED library actually contains 12 different color correction or color temperature options. To set the color correction, we'll simply run the function fastled.setCorrection. And inside of it, we'll simply put one of the correction bits. Uh, let's try out uh, clear blue sky. And here we can see it's actually even bluer, which is definitely not what we we're going for. So let's head back to the computer and try one of the other presets. Okay, so this time let's try the tungsten 40 watt option. And there we go. Now we've balanced the LEDs and we've got a nice natural white. We could take this even further if we wanted more of a warm white, but keep in mind that all we're doing here is dimming down the different LEDs to try to get them to match. So if we adjust it too much, we might not have the brightness we want. This is my second video on these RGB LED strips, and there's still more stuff we can do with them. If you'd like to see some light patterns or you have an idea of what I could do with them, drop a comment below and let me know. Or, if you'd like to learn about some other Arduino sensors and modules, check out my channel, Saber C++. Thanks for watching.